Jesus Christ. <laughs> it is so fucking delayed. It's like, clap. Clap. Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. boop. How's it going, Ryan? It's going pretty good, Harland. Where are we? Uh, we're about to start episode three. Is it three? Of Dawdler's Philosophy Podcast. Son of a bitch. And you know what we're going to talk about tonight? We're going to talk about a brand new original idea. (laughs) What? We're not going to talk about some derivative work from some tenured professor at a prestigious university. Those crust hogs. We're gonna, yeah. Um, <laughs> what what was it even called in the first place? We was it just the um, the trichotomy or something? Yeah, it was something. Um, I think we called it, and we still never landed together on this one either. But I I think we were calling it the like modes of inquiry. You were calling it that. I was calling it modes of investigation. <laughs> Because I think for my purposes, I like that aesthetically uh, better. But that might just be a take on it. And whatever it is, um, yeah, that's kind of, I, I don't I don't know. This is, a, this is an interesting one because we love it, but we're like, what is it? <laughs> so, uh, and so, yeah. for everybody out there, you as you like to refer to them, the zero listeners, the sum of the background is, uh, I've known this guy for, I don't know, like 10 years or something. And we've been getting together in various venues and chatting about ideas. And periodically, either of us might have <clears throat> some original thoughts and try them out on each other. And a lot of the time, you know, your ideas are really bad. So they don't go <laughs> anywhere. But this one, you had, you've had a couple that have been hit with me. And this is one of them. Um, nice. I remember, you know, you kind of presented it to me and I was like, yeah, that's good. I can dig that. And, you know, we even for a time worked on co-authoring a version of it because we both were able to subscribe to it. But I think subsequently over the years, we might have even drifted <laughs> further apart and taken it in yeah. a different route. But um, so... I know that it started out being a triangle and that it was about these modes. Um, Uh Do you want to give a shot at explaining what we're talking about? I'll give a shot. I, I hope to do it justice. I, you know, of course at the time, whenever this was first uh, introduced or whatever, it was much more fresh in my mind and all that. But uh, not that it isn't now because I, I have thought about it, but the the original version or whatever, I just, it's, uh, it's been a while. Um, but I think at the time I was just thinking about, you know, ways in which, uh, people, robots, you know, whatever my, you know, aliens, um, might think about doing some, you know, inquiry slash investigation and, what are the different ways that we tend to approach it? And I guess my little analogy, I'll just quickly say, is it's like when I lived in Boston, I remember, you know, sometimes I would take a different route to, say, Harvard Square, just walking or whatever. And it would just be like this completely different perspective, I feel like. You know, just be like taking this whole other approach. And, uh, you know, it wasn't the usual, it wasn't the thing I was most used to. And so it's kind of like that, like are, are these very, di- very different, not very, but these different ways of considering whatever, even it could be the same phenomenon that, you know, uh, is being examined or whatever. So I thought about, and, I, you know, I'll be honest, like when it comes to this kind of idea, I was thinking mostly about, you know, individuals uh, that stand out in one way, form, or another that I have interacted with over the years. And, of course, including myself and my own thoughts and all that kind of stuff. 
And so I was thinking about, well, first, I guess I'll just start out with probably the main one that probably started this whole thing. And it was uh, this whole idea of a truth seeker, this notion that some people, I don't know, seek the truth, but that in, in a way, that's kind of their whole view about uh, whatever is important, that there be some element of truth or, you know, you know, something hard, fixed and um, immovable, you know, something that can't be, um, you know, <laughs> I keep saying hard and fixed and stuff. Now I'm going to say molested. So something that can't be, you know, no molesto. Uh, so, um, <laughs> so the, the, the idea was that, the, that I was thinking about people like that. And I kind of think I want to lump someone like, say, you know, Richard Dawkins or, you know, a lot of religious people, you know, into this mode of like truth seekers. And I guess probably a lot of people on my like fucking Twitter feed, especially nowadays, if you think about, you know, uh, the American politics and probably British politics as well. Anyone who's being interfered with by the Russians. Um, there's this, you know, fake news and all that kind of stuff. And now everybody wants the truth. And it's as if somehow we could kind of parse all that out. So I just thought, okay, well, that's one mode that people kind of maybe operate out of. It's sort of like a thing that kind of floats with them. Here's another analogy for you. Um, in this truth thing, I always think now when I think about this kind of a mode is there was this video I saw once about this guy who's a camper and I'll be really brief. But what he does is he takes like a drone and he just like, cause the drones now have this GPS tracker thing so they can just stay within a certain distance from you, but like hovering above at some level. So you can be like, he's like on his hike and he's got like a point of view camera attached to him and there's some kind of narration and whatnot. And he's like, I'm going up this trail or whatever. But then he's got this like drone, like hovering. I and mean, if I imagine like if you were on the trail and you were coming around the bend and you could see him from around the bend, you would see this little like robot following him, like in some kind of science fiction, uh, like story or whatever. But anyway, I, I kind of think that's, yeah, like it's some kind of a pet and it's just, or a kind of almost like, let's say even companion. And it, that's kind of what I think of with these, you know, with the truth seeking mode. I think that's just, that's, that's my like non nuanced, you know, this, it's just kind of more, uh, gut checky. It's not really, um, it's more visceral than it probably deserves. In any way, in any case, that's kind of what I was thinking. So I had this one mode, truth seeking. And then I thought about like myself, you know, and I thought, well, that's not really how I walk around. I don't think anyway, of course, you know, how can I, how can I know? Um, I'm not the me in the, on the trail looking at me with this little thing floating around. Maybe I do have one, uh, a drone following close behind. But um, anyway, I kind of thought that my whole interest, and I had been reading this uh, book by James P. Kars, who is a, I guess you could say he's a philosopher of religion. I don't think he's actually religious. He just studies this stuff, and he just tries to understand it or whatever. Um, but he has this one book that I always return to. It is kind of vague and ambiguous, but it's a fun read, and there are lots of things that you can kind of get from it. Maybe I read a lot into it. I don't know, but I like it nonetheless. And it's a book called Finite and Infinite Games. And um, it just kind of was making me think about game playing. And I kind of feel like, yeah, that's kind of more like what I feel like it, I've been doing, at least in my life, because I was always very much into numerical modeling or just modeling in general, like, you know, playing with the knobs, you know, like I'm going to turn this knob here and I'm going to crank this wrench and just kind of see what happens when I mess with the variables. And I just love that idea, just like seeing how, things can develop and the kind of different results you can get, you know, what are the different behaviors of the model uh, putting out that you're trying to say match to some phenomenon or set a series of events in nature or whatever. Um, and so that was that one. And I guess I was calling that one, uh, you know, game player, like there's game players out there. Um, and then finally the last one though, I thought, well, I mean, really, Harland, I guess I was thinking about you. And I was thinking, there's always people, uh -huh. and I was reading a lot of philosoph philosophers of science, and 
but I mean, philosophers of science, philosophy of science is something I, I've always delved into since, you know, my master's or whatever. Because when you try and ask questions about some of the things you're doing, if you have a thesis, it's not uncommon, or at least seems not uncommon to me, to be running into philosophers of science, not the actual scientists. You know, so you want to know what, what is that and why are we saying it's that way? You don't, like, end up getting the... Scientists don't spend a lot of time writing about that, it seems. Some of them do, but a lot of them don't. And so anyway, I could, you know, often find myself turning to philosophers of science who seem to be asking questions about whatever the methodologies are in science or, you know, that I ha also had questions about. And anyway, but they also seem to be kind of saying, well, this, this mode of trying to do, you know, or this methodology has its mistakes and it's kind of, you know, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. There's contradictions or whatever it is. And so I always thought they're just like regulators or really overseers. They're just sort of like, eh, you know, like, and so that was the third mode I thought of as someone who's just kind of, trying to keep things somewhat in check kind of um with you know the have ideas keep their feet on the ground um you know and be somewhat um uh i guess grounded is the term you know just be somewhat based on something rather than moving along and i just know that like in my in passing you know just like it would be a philosopher of science who'd go up to a geneticist and be like well what is a gene have you seen one you know like and so, like, that kind of stuff, that's sort of like a overseeing kind of thing. Because game playing, you're not really, you're just sort of like, well, that's this thing, and apparently it does that, and I'm going to move it along, and I'm going to, you know. And so that, to me, seemed like less worried about, necessarily, less worried about definitions. I think at the start, these modes in this triangular shape that I just put out there for aesthetic purposes, I... um they were kind of hardened at the time, you know, kind of almost like categories, you know, well, definitely like categories, I guess. And, um, they were, you know, it was like truth seeker and gameplay year and overseer and all that. And then I just started thinking, um, well, is that necessarily what I do all the time? I don't think I do. I don't think I'm just sitting there truth seeking or being a truth seeker all the time or being a game player all the time. Like, I'm not one or the other. I think I can be a little bit of a bunch of the both and or the all three or whatever, and that these lines between them are just sort of spectra. Um, and so maybe if you were to plot, you know, your where you land on it, you know, if there was a way to do that, then you could find out, oh, yeah, maybe I'm, I lean more towards, you know, overseeing and truth or, you know, truth seeking or something or, you know, whatever in this triangular shape and so oh by the way i think it's kind of it's not important but it's just how i picture it um but i have true seeking at the top of this triangle at the you know apex or whatever the top's called and then on the left of the side of the triangle is game playing and on the right is overseeing it's totally not important but it's important enough to me that i mentioned <laughs> i'm like must know people must know where the things lie relative to each other anyway um so that's kind of, I, I guess that's it. I mean, uh, in a nutshell, what I was thinking, I think originally. Right, that sounds about right. That's what I remember the initial version as being. And as you mentioned, uh, the little part about you realize that you are not one of these things all the time, and probably no one is all the time. That's one of the things that I like about this idea that it's blatantly and obviously a mixture of false and meaningless, but it doesn't <laughs> pretend not to be. That it's just clearly a op optional gloss grid lens through which we can view things, but it is not pretentious. It obviously, you know, I don't think anyone would ever take this seriously and attempt to dogmatically stand behind this map and say something like, well, you are a game player. What are you doing talking about truth or whatever? That's It wouldn't work that way. So I think it functions well because one of my interests is in, as an overseer, mm. in facilitating discussions and, you know, designing discourse norms and improving interpersonal interactions of an intellectual type 
And I think that these kind of things can assist with reducing irrelevant, unnecessary, uh, superficial disputes. Because instead of... So you've got, I would call, uh, truth-seeking metaphysics might be a scientific realist, right? Like they're saying, well, no, the things I'm talking about are out there in the world. They're real. And maybe a game player is more like an instrumentalist or something. And they can say, well, I don't know if there are genes in the world. That's not really what I care about. I just want to further this line of research. And I'm going to use gene as the word to refer to this concept and see how it fits with the data and the model maps to the word. Um, Mm -hmm. Those two could get in a heated debate about ontology or the game player could say, well, okay, well, this person's being a little bit more truth-seeking than I am right now. As you reminded us, everyone probably moves around in the triangle at different times. Uh, So we can just say, okay, well, I'm being a game player, you're being a truth-seeker, but we don't really want to talk about that tonight, so instead let's just back, you know. It's a way to interpret ourselves and each other, I think, that can facilitate discussion sometimes. For sure. Yeah, I, I don't think we've yet to use it. Is We may have tried to be insulting with it, but the other person's always just like, yeah, I'm good with that. <laughs> you're, like, you're just being an overseer, and the other person's like, sure, you know, <laughs> or whatever. Oh, I think I'm guilty of that. I Every time I call somebody a truth seeker, it's an insult. No, <laughs> we'll get to that. Right. Well, I think in general, my, um, I don't know, my view on it may, I mean, I'm totally biased, I guess, in the whole idea that, you know, there is that approach that definitely, I think, can be taken too far. And then it's just guilt by association, you know, from there on. And so I'm like, ah, you bastards, you know, or whatever, even though uh, um, it's, it can't, it's not totally that. But anyway, so, yeah. So where do we go from here? Well, I don't know. I could talk a little bit about some various attempts that I made to try to flesh out slightly more what, how I perceive these three different positions. One of the ways when I tried to think about it and write about it, I was like, well, maybe we can talk about, okay, well, I like to, I'm going to call them orientations. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Is that work? Sure. And we could have the little, at some point, talk about whether inquiry or investigation is a preferable word or something else. But anyway, so the different orientations seem to me to probably have different motivations. And when I was going through them, I thought that probably the motivation of a truth seeker would be discovery. You know, that Mm -hmm. there is a world out there to be known. Our job is to discover the nature of reality. Whereas a game player's motivation might be more like development. That I'm going to come into some existing game, set of rules, system, program, and I'm going to push it along. I'm going to make it go further than it has before I entered the game. And that maybe an overseer might be motivated to facilitate. As I was saying, maybe with discussions or maybe between other types of inquirers or what have you. That they just, one of their motivations would be to, and maybe they would also just help everybody along. Like an overseer might step in and say, well, you know, I don't have any views on this of my own, but... If you're playing by those rules, then it seems to me that you should do this, that, and the other thing. Overseers say should a lot, I think. (laughs) So those were um, my suggestions for maybe some a description of their motivations. Maybe they have different goals or ends to which they're moving. And my descriptions for those were that a truth seeker is after big K knowledge. We want the justified true beliefs. We want to know things. 
maybe a game player's goal might be simply depth. Again, if they're just playing within a certain research program, that they just want to, you know, push it further, deeper, get more. And mm -hmm. my overseeker goal is agreement. And ah. as I reread that, I wonder how much that is idiosyncratic, because that's a goal that I personally have a lot. <laughs> um, so I don't know if you uh, you can talk about whether we think that's just me or whether that's a reasonable overseer thing. I had some other suggestions with question marks by them: progress, understanding, or simply more conversation. Those were candidates for overseer goals. Mm. Um, are you? I are. You, have you? Uh, is this is now a good time for me to step in at all or? Step in it. Okay. Step right in it. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Smelling what I'm stepping in. Um <clears throat> so so yeah, I mean I, I think that that's all perfectly you know, like all all of that sounds really good when I'm just sitting here having a beer, listening to you talk, and I'm like, Yeah, that's totally fine. And I I appreciate the thing that you had said about it not being pretentious. And so, of course, that becomes an instant worry of mine of just being like, oh, fuck, you know, because I, I want to take it in other places. And so now I'm like, is that going to am I, you know, adding that, you know, pretentiousness into the recipe, you know. Um, but at the same time, I noticed that the way you talk about it is kind of the way that um I don't think about it, which is interesting because when you talk about it, I don't disagree. I'm like, oh yeah, sure, okay, I like that. I'm not, I don't have a problem with that. I can play that game, but again, that game player in me, the game player, er, er, um, is like, you know, like, oh, uh, let's just keep playing. <laughs> like, I guess it's like the only like, because, and that's that's I guess my problem probably. Um, but, uh, I will say this just as a quick aside, you know, you can say it can be idiosyncratic if agreement is the goal of overseeing because you are the archetype overseer. <laughs> so whatever you say, that's what will be, you know, anyway. Um, so yeah, I, I guess, um, I then was naturally just, I kept thinking about these things. And I guess what I really think about um, uh, Truth Seeker was it, that was just a buzzword, uh, you know, in a way. I feel like game playing is a better match, and I think overseeing is a better match for those different modes slash orientations slash, you know, end members of Spectra or whatever. But um, Truth Seeking kind of always bugged me because I was like, I don't think they're seeking the truth. That's not really what I in my heart of hearts think, you know? And so that was the other thing. Like when you were like, the goal is discovery. I was thinking, no, no, I don't think that's their goal. Like, I think the goal for, um, you know, truth seeking is confirmation. I don't think it's discovery. Um, and oh, confirmation is a game player thing. Totally. No confirmation. <laughs> Oh no, God! So here I we guess go. I'll just yeah, no, we won't get totally into it yet because I need to be able to give you my whole spiel, and then you can be like, nope, or whatever, and then we can talk about it from All there. Right, we'll finish spieling but I wanna... before we dis disagree. Well, but but uh, we first got to talk about the diamond because that's the next iteration in this where I think I kept going and you're just sort of like back at the place we were at and like. See ya. <laughs> so I before included. we even go to the diamond, do you want me? I had a uh, a three dimensional triangle or whatever. There was also sub orientation spectra that I developed for each of the choices. Oh God, yeah, yeah. Before we move on from the diamond, we should cover all the territory. Yeah, of the first three. Yeah, exactly. So you know when just developing, analyzing more the three points of the triangle. 
you know, and trying to make it a little bit more filled out because, as we're saying, nobody is any of these things. But right. um, to make it a little deeper, to play this game, I thought maybe we could, there could be a spectrum that all of these different people could be on. And the truth seeking, and it, you know, this will make sense when I just say what they are, I think. The truth seeking spectrum was between an asserter and a questioner. So that if you're playing, if you're participating in the mode of inquiry called truth seeking, you could spend more of your time formulating these questions, which again, I think are realistically motivated and aimed. That your question would be, well, what is a gene or whatever? And you think it's in out in reality, you want to find it, but you could be more a question asker. And there's another person in our acquaintance group who I think is that archetype. Or you could be <laughs> more like the Richard Dawkins, Sean Carroll, Lawrence Krauss style truth seeker who does a lot of asserting. Um, and Or anywhere on that spectrum in between. Uh, the game player one was between victory and enjoyment right like you could be mm. playing the game for what is it that there's something you want to win and that might be a person whose goal is to get the nobel or something in my field <laughs> they still don't care if what they're saying is the truth necessarily but they want to be the best at this one or the sub orientation that i think you are often archetypally is an enjoyment style game player because as you even said at the beginning of this discussion somewhere you don't want the game to end like if the overseer comes <laughs> yeah. in and gives an explicit and exhaustive definition of each of these things that's what you're a little bit want to pull back from that because you're like oh but then the game's over you know right because yeah. you want to be, it to be an infinite game so the James P. Carr's infinite gamers are enjoyment style game players. And then the Definitely. overseer spectrum I had between the normative and the descriptive. So I think both of those are generally the you know, standing on your ivory tower, looking down over things. Do you merely want to describe what's happening? Or how many shoulds do you want to put in? You know. So Right. I'm the normative overseer because I walk around shitting on people all the time. Or I think you could be an overseer and resist <laughs> imposing your opinions on people so much as just um, to the best of your ability describing things from a neutral, pseudo-neutral perspective. I don't know what you think about that addition. I, I like that too. Like, so I'm feeling the same way I felt about when you were talking about the, <laughs> you know, what are the goals and motivations and stuff? I'm like, yeah, that's, I like that too. <clears throat> so that's, that's a, that's a problem because I'm like, well, I'm still going over here, you know? Um, let me see though. <clears throat> the, um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I like the, I, the only thing I, the only thing that I guess would be the the crux of the matter, is um, I'm not saying that truth seeking can't ask questions or whatever, but it depends on what one thinks they're asking questions about. You know, um, is it an inquisition? Because <laughs> that sounds like you know more like what I think it would be rather than a oh I'm just off to try and find things. You know, like it's uh to me it's um you know i can't go into it too much until i've actually given my little spiel about things but basically that's sort of my that's the only part where i get hung up in it i guess it still is on the truth seeking because to me that's still the one even though it's kind of the one that i started with it's still the one that to me has the less amount of oomph to you know it, we you and i because maybe we you know, tend to be more in the realm of game playing and overseeing, uh, respectively. Um, you know, it's kind of one of those things that, uh, 
it might be deeper because we're more familiar with those areas or something. Maybe not, but I was, you know, it's just one thought about it. But um, so that was my only thing about that. Um, so, but otherwise I like it. I like the approach. I like the, it, cause it's still simple. You know, it's not, you know, it's not uh, like I was talking about with, when it came to like uh, the Chinese room, I thought it was all kind of tortured. This doesn't seem tort Like it's like, Oh yeah, it's just a natural. You're just kind of like plucking out two lines out of the one orientation, you know, and just doing it the other two as well. And just, you know, just placing a couple things. It just seems, you know, it's it, maybe it's the symmetry or something, but. Nonetheless, it's still nice. I like. I don't mind it at all. It just makes our um, the space in which we locate people and ourselves in order to interpret them. It just gives us another dimension, so that we can be even more specific in our interpretation. But yeah, at the same, absolutely. more specific, but also you know even more false, because <laughs> obviously all of this is completely arbitrary but right right the only also the only other thing is that um i guess your try the triangle with your up and down might be kind of like a block like a triangular block and so you're somewhere right. within that chunk you know not you know and that's the added dimension that you were talking about and that's that, what i mean yeah you know yeah exactly that's yeah that makes that makes sense um and i like it um so there's there's that so now it's like well how are we gonna fight about this and i'm guessing that just because um of who we are i'm gonna continue on in uh, another direction and then you're gonna be like no give me my triangular block right so up to here is where we had kind of worked on it together and there was some amount of yeah yeah all right yeah this is all good uh but then you went off the deep end and then you came back and told me one day guess what it's no longer a triangle i made it a diamond <laughs> yeah i made it a diamond because uh you know diamonds are forever oh so yeah although this diamond doesn't last very long until you know it, it actually it's kind of a brief moment you know i always think of like uh and this is probably not relatable to anybody but myself, but, um, and all zero plus Harlan listeners, uh, but it's like decay chains, you know, and, and some, you know, like when, uh, uranium decays to some lead or whatever, uh, there are other things that are decay, it decays too as well along the way or whatever. And sometimes the, the, the rate at which it's, you know, it lasts in that state is super short. And I kind of feel like, you know, we've got the triangle, and then like diamond, and then this other new thing that I'm, you know, I've been talking about loosely, more or less. But you know, when you and I talk, because I know you're not into it as much, I haven't been talking to you about it. So for me, it's all long lived. But whatever. oh my god, there's more than a diamond now. No, no, it's not. A, it's not that. There's still just the four. It's not okay. But it's kind of like I kind of threw away the diamond shape. Yeah, that'll be new as new to me as to the audience. So, mm. right? That'll be fun. So do you want to do the diamond first before going into Absolutely. the... Absolutely. Or... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we should do the diamond first because that came next. Uh, and so then I was like, because of my lack of satisfaction with the triangle, and in particular with truth seeking, even though I'm satisfied with just the take that you've got with the block, you know, the triangular block is that actually is there a shape called something like like with where you have the thickness do they add that in geometry are they like like anyway, this whatever. the word that is like a circle to sphere what is triangle to the right or know. the cube you know like you've got a cube you've got a sphere you've got a what with the triangle <laughs> anyway uh you got a toblerone um so anyway uh or that's more like a pyramid whatever um Prism? Is it a prism? Oh, uh, oh! I said a pyramid. Pyramid? Yeah. I was saying, is it prism? Would that be a word for it? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Um, while I'm talking, you can look that up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, and that would be good to know. 
because I'd use that word if that's what that meant. Um, so anyway, uh, yeah, so then I was thinking, well, you know, because of my lack of satisfaction with truth-seeking and because if I think the way that I kind of initially and kind of ultimately am thinking about it, that orientation, um, I did think you know, there's an opposite to that or not like, you know, it's not it's not any more of an opposite to truth seeking than overseeing is to game playing. But there is a there's an axis or whatever. There's something that that lies between them. The axes came out almost immediately after I created the diamond. But I didn't I felt I felt that axes and talking about quadrants, which I'll talk about in a little bit, is is kind of boring. So anyway, um, so I added engineering. That was the fourth one. And uh, so now your triangle with true seeking at the top, game playing at the left, and then overseeing at the right. Now at the bottom, you've got engineering. And the reason why I was thinking about engineering was because when we talk about things, a lot of the things that, or the, the kind of position that we often take when we're talking about things is often we don't take this truth seeking position. We often take what I would call like an engineering position in that, you know, well, it's, you know, I don't know what the, what, what you know, um, the truth is or whatever the fixed points might be out there, uh, you know, reality or whatever it is, but I can still build a bridge. You know, I still can construct something. I can still work with the world. It's not like a thing I can't do anymore because I don't have, uh, you know, uh, truth seeking, but at the same time, it's not necessarily game playing because I wouldn't rely on a game player to build a bridge, you know? Uh, they would kill you with it, you know, with the, the construction, because that's not what's important to them are hardened, hard and fast things. What's important to them is the dynamics, you know, is the things that are moving and in, in, in play. And so, of course, the analogy, just to quickly throw it in there, is like I like American football, professional American football, NFL, cracking skulls. Um, and it's sort of like with game playing and overseeing, you know, it's like uh, there's a lot of things happening that the refs who are the overseers or people who are overseeing or putting on that hat anyway as overseers have to keep and keep track of. There's just a lot going on as a few of them there, but there are fewer overseers than there are game players. And the game players are all the players on the field. And the game is fast and it's moving and it's just, you know, things are just flying. And um, and so anyway, that was, you know, sort of, you know, my thinking. And so because that axis is the only way I'm going to put it, but that, that connection between those different orientations is so dynamic. It's not, it's not a thing that you just, uh, you know, there aren't real assertions. There's, there are certainly probably questions. There are certainly probably, uh, you know, um, you know, hypotheses, but there aren't, you know, like, you know, you know, we know there is this or whatever, just like, you know, I was thinking when it came to engineering, they could be like, well, we know that, you know, the, this, if you put, you know, uh, like go back to the, um, you know, the, to the, to the Gould thing that we did, the, the, the horrible episode last time. Um, but, you know, we know we can put a dome on some arches, you know, and the arches will hold that dome, you know, and we know arches are a great way to, you know, build walls or whatever it is, like, you know, it's that kind of orientation towards, you know, whatever it is that we were trying to do. It's, you know, investigation, creation, all these things. Anyway, and this might be where I veer off and Harlan's like, well, wait a minute, but we're not there yet. And I haven't gotten to my spiel anyway. But that was the, th the fourth one that I added, engineering. So I thought engineering was on the other end of the spectrum from truth seeking. And I can't really but give my spiel as to why... I thought uh, so we can, if you want, we can stop for a second and then you can see if you can do whatever you want. What do you mean you can't? Why? Why can't you? Because you need some, uh, you need a foil to play off against or what? Hmm. No, I mean, all right, well, what do you, I uh, didn't. Uh, so uh, when you uh, came up okay. with number four, I mm -hmm. less like it. Right, like I like we were saying, when you put out the first thing, it was aesthetically pleasing to me. I thought, yeah, this is good. It doesn't 
ring any alarm bells, I can see some usefulness, I like it, and I will work on developing it further. With right. adding engineering below truth-seeking and turning the whole thing into a diamond, I didn't feel the same sense of cognitive harmony. And when I mm. thought about why, it started with wanting to collapse engineering into game playing because the way i understand them i think of engineering as a subtype of game playing and it's the people who play the sort of game where you're constructing something with found objects with materials rather than with words or concepts or ideas you can play games with lots of different stuff if you play games with objects then you're an engineer but it's still just game playing it was my first thought then after some discussion i began to wonder if i actually thought that engineering is not on the same level of abstraction as the other three that engineering isn't really a mode of inquiry but it's rather just a basic activity or something like playing football or what you know well i guess it's it's a level up from playing football maybe playing sports or something is but cuz i was thinking the other 3 over the minuscule number of tests that we've run <laughs> seem to apply to a lot of endeavors like you can do these things as a truth seeker or as a game player or as an overseer but it doesn't flow as smoothly to say oh yeah i'm engaging in this investigation as an engineer well if you're just engaging in this investigation then you're not engineering anything because engineering is you need to be playing with blocks and putting things together and making objects obviously it all depends on the definitions of these terms that we never gave super strict explicit definitions of the true seeking game playing overseeing to know and i think we understand them differently we already had a brief frictive episode about game playing a second ago but anyway what was you huh. what do you say in response to either of those well it's funny because sadly i got stuck on something that was your earlier version of thinking about engineering <laughs> and i'm like but the idea that engineering is you know that you had the one which was a, it was subsumed by game playing or whatever and then you had the other one which said that it's just not even on this the other aspect is that it's just not even on this plane at all like it's it's down a level not underneath anything it's just it just doesn't fit within the you, as you said, it didn't it didn't provide uh, the same kind of ha cognitive harmony. And I think what you're also maybe saying is that it also doesn't provide the same. It's not in the same weight class. It's not harmonious in that way. So it's kind of like it's it's either a lightweight or whatever the idea is, undefined as all of them are. <laughs> right. Like, I'm just saying you should if these three things are somehow worthy of being on a plane and compared to each other as equivalence in at least this one dimension, you should be able to take any sentence that you stick one of these in as a modifier, and you should be able to stick them all in. And we had found some sentences where I was like, yeah, X, Y, and Z in a truth-seeking mode, okay, sure, in a game-playing mode. But then if I put in an engineering mode, it just didn't make any sense. So it doesn't seem to me to be a mode as the others are. Right. Um, I guess I kind of have to give you my spiel in order to then arrive at, you know, at least some way of talking about these things. Um, and maybe if everything goes like amazingly for me, we can uh, come up with definitions or something or definitions will seem more available or something like that um but i don't think that's what's going to happen <laughs> i'm pretty much going into this thinking when i'm done you'll be like yeah that's nice but you'll be probably something like i am and say but that's 
it's not you know it's stuck in my craw differently uh i just want to say to all zero members out there that i think this is why and it hurts me to say this because i'm i'm having a lot of fun having some drinks uh you know and we're chatting about fun ideas and stuff but the the problem here which is the sobering point is that when you don't have definitions what the fuck are we talking about you know and so you and i have gone in clearly these different directions as fun and interesting as they may be as well thought out and as you know cute and all that kind of business as they could be um it's like well you know the real work i think which is like obviously what we've been avoiding entirely with this thing is like we've just been giving examples of what it would be but without actually providing any kind of definition and so when we're just giving examples of what it would be you know you can have an incredible amount of what sometimes some people call mission creep or scope creep is the other phrase that sometimes people use where you just sort of just like there's no version control you just like you know just keep going and going what this thing project needs is an overseer um and uh you know that's kind of the that's that's the problem is that I think we get too excited about it because maybe it's so aesthetically pleasing, um, and for whatever reason we have a it, it it plays on our intuitions in a way that kind of lulls us into not like questioning it you know or, <laughs> or something like that maybe that's just me, um, but uh, so should I I think now might be the time for my schmeal or whatever. What do you think? I am prepared. Okay, so I'm going to be reading all zero members, so I apologize. I'm going to try and do it in a way that's like talky, but it's best that I do that because I'll I'll say something that I didn't mean to say, but because my brain is just like, I'm tired, and throw it out there, and then it'll get stuck in Harlan's brain, and he'll be like, what about this? You're wrong, you know, and so I got to read. So anyway, okay, Harlan, uh, you know, refresh your glass. I think of there being like two axes on, let's say, what is traditionally called the Y-axis. There are the end members of truth-seeking and engineering, as we have discussed them to this point. On the X-axis, there is game-playing and overseeing. The axes intersect in the middle like a goddamn cross. And, you know, one could consider there being four quadrants if you wanted. I know that's sort of popular among some people these days. Um, or at least I've seen it around lately. So I see going clockwise, northeast, south, and west, like as I said before, as truth-seeking, overseeing, engineering, and game-playing. But again, that's just me. So I consider the y-axis the axis of overdetermination, and the x-axis as the axis of underdetermination. So I was able to think about these things a little bit, and I was able to kind of like e- explore what I can recall from my past learning and stuff, because that's probably where this is coming from. And I remember in my, you know, linear algebra, you know, classes and stuff and, and hearing about that. I know these two terms are in philosophy and philosophy of science. And I kind of think they actually mean the same things. It's just that it's been operationalized differently in each, you know, um, but more or less is kind of reflecting of the same, uh, whatever phenomenon of inquiry or whatever. So so I'll just introduce two terms first. One is equations and the other one's unknowns. And this is kind of the more esoteric part. This is the more linear algebra part. Um, so don't get too scared away if you don't like this kind of stuff. Just know I'm kind of just giving you the little bit of the base and then we'll set it up quickly from there. Equations are mathematical formulas, usually with different terms on either side of an equal sign. Unknowns here are like unknown measures that could be taken from a system, but are not yet read. You know, they haven't been collected yet. Um, so overdetermination, at least in uh, linear algebra, is where there are more equations than unknowns. Uh, there are more ways to understand relationships among entities than there are entities to relate. Underdetermination or underdetermined systems are the opposite. There are more unknowns than equations. So an esoteric example for a system where we could work out whether it is under or overdetermined is like a network of, you know, resistors transferring power. Um, 
there's power input and thermal dissipation output. Uh, you have information on how much power is coming into the system, what the ambient temperature is, and you know level of heat flow resistance the resistors are set at. But you don't know all the temperatures for the different parts of the system, like the surrounding structure the network is anchored to, or the power dissipations happening at the various resistors in the network. So imagine that in some cases there are more unknowns, more things you can't, you know, more power dissipations and and uh, and and you know um, you know thermal dissipations than you know you, you know of. Then there are equations to account for them. Or sometimes maybe there's more equations than the unknowns, and you got all these different ways to relate them. So for our purposes, let's consider the equations as like, I don't know, requests or strategies. And the unknowns is like variables or maybe even like problems or actions or goals. For the purposes of using the analogy of overdetermination with truth seeking and engineering, uh, I see how like having a solid answer or solution or even hypothesis attempts to make all the various explanations and models and strategies fall in line with it. Like here, all roads lead to Rome. Scientific explanations must fit into a picture of God in religious doctrine, or perhaps all strategies for supporting another structure in constructing a bridge must adhere to the basic principles of statics. There's a church, uh, just as an anecdote, near where my son goes to summer camp, and it has a banner that runs across its gable that reads, welcoming all people, honoring all paths to God. And I always found it funny because I wanted to like... <laughs> In another life, go in there and just like get free meals and be like, you know, yeah, I'm just, I'm looking for God through science. You know, like, have you found it yet, brother Ryan? And I'd be like, <laughs> not yet, but damn, this mashed potatoes are good. <laughs> and then be like, the next time they see me, they're like, have you found God through science yet? Gosh, it's real hard to do it through science. This is a tough path. You know, I'd be like, but this mac and cheese. <laughs> anyway, that's the thing I chuckle about when I ride past. Um, so truth seeking is like relative to a view from nowhere or Laplace's demon or whatever, fixed points and stuff. Whereas I consider engineering is relative to what is, you know, it's building upon and how things hang together. So everything needs to be kind of consistent, even though it really probably won't ever really achieve that consistency due to the likely contradictions that can arise in what I'm assuming are open systems. There's just too many loose ends. But that's kind of the approach. You know, that's the way we go about investigating things. And to quickly play off of what you're saying, Harland, about engineering and why you don't think it jives, I think it does because there's always an investigation in a way with engineering because every setting is different. Everything is always going to be new. You have your, st you know, your statics and things must, have, uh, you know, like um, uphold those principles or whatever. And so you go with that. Things must align with that. Maybe there's various different ways to um, solve the problem. You've got a suspension bridge and to, and instead of another kind of bridge or whatever it is. But, you know, like kind of I, I was doing some, I was helping a general contractor friend with, you know, demolition and all this kind of stuff. And each time, you know, you go in with these basic ideas about how you're going to do it. It's all settled. It's not like some kind of like mystery or anything. But you still run into problems and you have to solve those problems. And so there is like a bit of like trying to check it out. Like, what is it that's going on? You know, I got to figure out how to work this thing. So there is that element, but don't comment yet. So with underdetermination, game playing and overseeing takes the opposite approach to investigation. And rather than attempt to support or confirm a single idea or even a, a bunch of ideas, a bunch of ideas, <laughs> that's where I was when I was at that church having their mashed potatoes. Um, they're, you know, they're attempting to explore the space of solutions that are viable in dealing with any given problem, but there could be far more problems than solutions, you know, and a woman's work is never done. So the work along the axis of underdetermination is not confirmatory, like overdetermination, it's exploratory, you know, for truth seeking and engineering, the results are important. There is a God, or there is a way to support a dome in a cathedral. Everything else must be kind of in accordance with those ends. For game playing and overseeing, the solutions aren't more important than any, you know, the, the ways that you get there. But sometimes there's, you know, these tapering triangular shapes uh, that arise, or there's some other things that happen as you're exploring the design space, trying out new things. And these things can become 
things in and of themselves. Sometimes we get too excited in playing the game and there needs to be some kind of version control. There's a regulation, standardization, oversight. So we make use of it later. We need to always remember to define our terms, which we don't do in this case, but whatever. You know, like if we wish to be consistent in our paths to solutions so we can return to them when we want, which is something actually is a lesson for us here, I guess. If game playing is like players on the field executing plays, then yeah, the overseers, overseeing is done by the, the referees or whatever. And I was thinking about there's uh, in pro football, um, you know, there there's that the, the the example of just like I would say like an everyday game playing overseeing activities or whatever would be just some kind of like crazy interesting deception that's sort of within the rules, but nobody really knows if it's within the rules as it's happening. So like, uh, you know, the, everybody hates the New England Patriots and Bill Belichick and he's the evil Dark Lord or, or Dark Lord of the Sith or whatever. Um, but uh, there was this one game uh, three years ago in the AFC Divisional playoffs between the Patriots and the Ravens. And the Ravens were pretty much like if both teams tried to just show up and play like mano a mano, the Ravens would have won. But... And I'm just saying that, but they seem to be in better control. Their players were making plays against, you know, against the, it just seemed like a weaker opponent in the Patriots. But what the Patriots did was they decided to screw around with who's eligible receiver. So like sometimes it would just be this, and they could go in to one of the refs, not all of the refs, but just be like, you know, 75 is an eligible receiver, even though he's like 314 pounds, you know, and he's obviously a left tackle. And like, but then the running back would be like, I'm ineligible. And he'd just be out there on the, on the right wing or whatever, just like standing there and they, he'd be covered, but the left tackle wouldn't. And so they'd hike the ball and, you know, the, the, you know, the guy would run and he, Tom Brady would throw a pass to him or whatever. And even like, I think one of the first times, if it wasn't the first time that happened, the Ravens coach ran out on the field and he ran out on the field yelling and screaming while the refs were like, what's happening? <laughs> like, they were like, I don't understand. Like wh what happened? And they had to like check. And finally one of them had to be like, yeah, he called him in as an el eligible. And the other guy's like, yeah, he said he was ineligible. And you know, so it totally made the whole thing a muck, but the Patriots were in like a hurry up offense. So every time they would, do it it was just like bang 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 and like the raven just didn't know what was going on and it's kind of similar to like um you know when the guy ran out of bounds there's this like an old story about this team of native americans coached by pop warner if you want to know you can probably go to the archives at radio lab it's a great one uh sort of about the history of american football or whatever but he has the you know they're playing against yale and yale's just kicking their butts like physically because they're all just like, you know, future doctors and lawyers and political leaders, and they're all super white and all that kind of stuff. And they're just pounding these poor, malnourished Native Americans who are just angry and raging at their existence and love football to express that, but still can't beat the bigger guy. And so Pop Warner tells the receiver just like, who was getting his butt kicked the whole time, couldn't even get off the line of scrimmage or whatever. He was like, go around the, the bench. <laughs> Next time he does that, like pushes you out of bounds and all that, and just like run into the end zone from the other side and we'll throw it to you. And that's what they did. They, and so like the, the refs, like there was no rule against that at the time. And they were like, oh, touchdown, you know, like, so that's kind of like, I think, run of the mill stuff between game playing and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, overseeing and stuff like that. So that was, I, that was just a thing I felt I needed to say, edit that out later. But um Anyway, and it all kind of reminds me of the dichotomy of finite and infinite games in James P. Carr's 86 book of the same name that we mentioned earlier. You know, the underdetermined axis is like an infinite game, and the overdetermined axis is like a finite game insofar as a finite game is played for the purpose of winning, and an infinite game is played for the purpose of continuing the play. And that's why I don't agree wholeheartedly with... Um, the approach that you landed at, which I'm not saying I completely like abandoned it or whatever. I like it too. But what I was, where I was coming from, you know, all these things are in your head, the linear algebra, reading finite and infinite games, and you're thinking about these things, but they're not quite landing. And it took some time for them to actually kind of fall and, and place where I thought, you know, oh yeah, that's kind of what I think I'm thinking, you know, if that makes any sense, which it might not, but Anyway, I will stop there. <laughs> that was fun and great. Um, we'll see how much of it I got on the first try or how much needs to be reiterated. 
uh, in general, I liked most of it. I mean, I don't have anything to pounce on and complain about. Um, I don't know if over and under determined are the best terms. Maybe they are. Um, so the way you were spelling it out, you have equations and unknowns, right? And equations are mathematical formula with an X on one side and a Y on the other, and they're set equal to each other, and you solve for, right? Is what equations are all about. And then unknowns were possible but as yet untaken, unextracted well, hold on. data from systems. Can I, yeah, so can I rephrase what I think you're saying? Yeah. So you're saying, are you saying that you think that I mean like the X and Y axis, uh, that like somehow there's like uh, some linear algebra happening over the top of this truth-seeking, uh, you know, this, these lines where the end members are like truth-seeking, overseeing, et cetera? Is that what you think? Like I'm just sort of like, yeah, and there's, you know, that there's some sort of equations that can in theory, be put over the top of this and solve the problem? Is that what you're thinking? No. I don't... No, no, no. I was just attempting to reiterate what you mean by equations and unknowns. I'm just kind of okay. trying to put everything you just said in my own words with no football analogies. Right. Now, I would just say really quickly, um, the y-axis, x-axis thing are kind of separate from the... Uh, totally. I should have equations. said A and B. What you know, I didn't mean. Okay. I'm not referring to the axes, anyways. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, fine. But that's I'm just saying that's what you mean by equations, right? A equals B, and they each refer to something in the model or the world, and our job is to solve for one or the other, given information about one or the other. Sure. And then unknowns are. Um, unextracted but extractable data from systems, but we haven't taken the measurement yet. Is that right? Kind of. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, there could be... Yeah. I mean, how I often see it is like um, you can have uh, three people that you have at your disposal to ask to do things, like make requests. This is kind of how I saw it and liked it a little bit on the the interwebs. And, you know, you say to one person, you know, you've got Bob, Sherry, and Carrie or whatever. And you say to Bob, fetch me a glass of water. To Sherry, you say, do your homework. And then to Bob again, you say, you know, pour out that water or something else, you know. And Carrie isn't even included, you know, or whatever. So it's it's sort of a, you know, that's sort of the idea of unknowns and equations. The requests are like the equations and the unknowns are like, you know, what you have in the system that you're solving you know, and what you have access to and what you don't. But anyway, keep going. I will stop. Mm, yeah, I feel like that made it worse. That worse? made it harder for me to understand <laughs> what the two are. Yeah, I thought that I did. And if I do, if based on the versions that I gave, if that's close or it, that the overdetermination axis, here's where the axis comes in which is the Y, which is the truth-seeking to engineering mm -hmm. axis yeah. that you call the overdetermination axis. And now I'm going to add something that I don't think you said, but I'm uh, hung up on this overdetermination thing. And I'm like, where does the over come from? Rather than just being the determinism axis. And there's one equation for every factor in the reality and you know but you want it to be overdetermined so then was the idea that there on that axis will always or usually be candidate equations that are mutually exclusive not always and it means yeah, yeah. So I was thinking, you know, the, the the 
the adage I used was all all roads lead to Rome. You know, things kind of have to you know, like. So this is probably where the analogy part of the uh, over and under determination come in. You know, are are broken up. They decouple themselves maybe from what it is that I'm saying. And so I was trying to kind of use it, and then I keep you. I keep the words as well, just to kind of keep the reference there. But like, the idea was that. Um, I, I kind of want to use it as sort of like a, you know, I want to use the, the the idea of it as tension in the, you know, the 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 band or the rubber band or whatever to be able to like shoot off, and to get to this place where I'm saying, you know, there's, you know, um, you can have lots of different explanations, but that you know ultimately this is why I think it's kind of confirmatory in the way that truth seeking and engineering operate is that they're like truth seeking it's it's already got this idea about truth or fixed points and so things have to kind of they fall in line within that and so you don't have any kind of you know absurd ideas like things that are you know in in the truth seeking mode i can see someone saying well that's impossible you know that's not something that can happen or whatever i can see there being you know when one is oriented in that way a little bit more strongly you know, they can be a little less uh, interested in alternatives, you know, or what have you, because they're trying to fit all of these things into this, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like confirming a hypothesis. You want to see if, you know, the different, uh, you know, models or, you know, uh, data collections or whatever, the different sources or controlled experiments or whatever, all kind of point towards this one kind of overarching idea, you know, and so... That's kind of what I was thinking. And I guess that's sort of also, in a way, what engineering is about because they have their basic, I, like I was using the example of like statics or whatever, you know, load-bearing walls and <clears throat> so on and so forth. And that that is, even though, you know, not every situation is exactly the same. It's not, a, you know, you're not operating in a vacuum. So there's always going to be little differences. And so you have to still try and solve the problem. But the, every, all the different ways in which uh, you try and solve that problem have to kind of, cohere or adhere to that you know underneath that umbrella of like statics like we have this notion of things have to kind of fall within that so you can come up with various different ways um usually in like if you're a general contractor or something like that and we're using very materialist real world kind of examples here but you know you've got you know your sit whatever the situation is you know that you enter into and then you got to come up with ways to kind of solve it there could be a bunch of different ways but they all have to adhere to to statics you know it's that kind of thing so like there is there is a you know everything has to adhere to whatever you know uh some physical laws or some basic principles of biology or something like that like that's kind of what i think truth seeking ends up being in the end in that end of the spectrum People, uh, I think, God, uh, people who are religious are truth seeking. I think, and they often, often call themselves that. Maybe it's a uh, phony or whatever, but they're still engaging with people uh, who are like scientists and stuff like that, and they're still trying to get things to fit within their, I guess, worldview or whatever it is—the thing that they think is there. You know, because that's kind of to me, that's the that's the care is the results, the outcomes, the you know, that's what's important. You know, what we have, you know, that kind of like, Ugh, you can't take this away from me. We possess it now. Um, and you don't have to look at it in that kind of negative light. I'm just trying to get the point across. You said a few things in there that I think I'm going to come back to that I'm going to use to question whether it actually should be grouped, or what we could gain by adding the additional grouping of the hypotenuses, that I think there's a lot that's the same between truth seekers and game players and overseers and engineers. But I, before we do that, I want to finish running through your four-part thing. And we were working on this number three being the over-determination, at least as a term. And I wonder if and that what you just said didn't help me with that. <laughs> so right. um, maybe it has to do with, you're saying this is a term from linear algebra? Or where was this term from for you? Yeah, it was, it was just from, you know, linear algebra. Okay, I don't know what it means there. 
And I wonder if it's different than the place that I'm familiar with it from the metaphysics of cause effect and stuff. The way that it's used sometimes in some philosophical works is that an event is considered overdetermined if it has multiple effects such that we're convinced by various counterfactual reasonings that if you took one of those effects away, the event would be the same. And the famous example is like a person standing in front of a firing squad and of very high quality marks people such that you know you've got seven people all shooting at this guy and every one of them puts the bullet through his heart so then we reason counterfactually well if mark's person number two had uh, misfired the convict would still be dead so that their death is overdetermined by the firing squad because it would happen even without some of the causes do you like how does that relate to you and to this uh just fine <laughs> say more about that what i mean how so why is the y axis called the overdetermination one because that's the one where like i was saying before and maybe maybe if i just say it again i don't know if that that works or not <laughs> but now that you've asked maybe because i said a lot this isolating this just out maybe that would help i don't know i mean do you want to just at least think about me trying it like that i don't know unless you don't Unless you want me to try it a different way. But, I mean, in general, yeah, that's the idea, is that it's not necessarily um, – counterfactuals, I don't think, are at all what, like, linear algebra cares about in that kind of a formulation, right? I mean, that's, uh, um, that's, not, that's not important necessarily, I don't think. Um, there can be – perhaps contradictions or, you know, inconsistencies or incompleteness or whatever. But I don't think, I mean, maybe that's all that all these people mean together. Um, but I think we're all kind of, I think the astute listener, the zero listeners out there might be able to say, yeah, I kind of think they're talking about the same stuff. And I think, they might not have heard every word that the other person said and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think that might be what it is. In addition to that, I may not be characterizing it all that great. Um, and so uh, that is also probably part of it. What I care about in the end saying, or at least taking from this overdetermination stuff and underdetermination, is the idea that um, you would even say well, it doesn't matter if that guy missed. He got shot and is dead anyway. Well, it doesn't matter if, you know, this new scientific, uh, you know, uh, or, or even, you know, let's say, like, it doesn't matter what neuroscience has to say about perception. I'm a naive realist. And things are, you know, absolutely as they come in. You know, it's that kind of sticking to your guns more or less. It's confirmatory. So you... Maybe you could say, oh, there's confirmation bias, but you might be able to say there's bias in everything. So I'm not worried about that part, and I'm trying not to sound too negative on that side, but that's just kind of where I naturally just go every single fucking time. Um, but that's the idea, is that you are it's more confirming of the things we already have. And in some cases, like engineering, it can be kind of, you know, I think it can be quite useful. I think I lean in that direction more or less is, hey, you know, we have this thing and we can use it, you know, maybe even, a, you know, a game playing in game playing. You can like quickly go to the engineering and set something up because you can just use those basic principles and then start to explore in a different way. You know what I mean? Like you can kind of bounce between the various orientations to whatever degree, you know, um, to be able to accomplish your projects. Um, and so that's kind of where I was going with it. Um, Whatever you said in the middle of that, I liked. Uh, but I, now I'm trying to remember what it was. Um, 
that it doesn't what you you said what i really care to get at here is the distinction between on this y axis it doesn't matter what we say the system is what it is the it's maybe the objective axis subjective axis mm. like it doesn't matter what our model is the truth is the same but on the game player overseer axis it's kind of the opposite what we say is what goes on this axis we're writing our own right. game rules or we're you know well we're definitely yeah we're definitely or just or or at least encountering things that we wouldn't have encountered if we stuck to well we're just going to do you know we're going to stick to our statics and we're going to you know what it, if you're building a house you don't want to go off on a tangent you know you want to build that goddamn house so you're going to stick to the things that make it work you know and it's you might be building on a slope or you might be doing all these different things that have rougher terrain and you have to account for it or whatever it is and so you just still have your your thing and how you end up getting there however the bullet is fired whoever fires it you know so long as it lands is what your goal is you know um and in some cases it might be uh you know just a positive thing and just saying like you know or i don't know why i'm bringing negative and positive into this i'm just like super self-conscious but like um it might be you know that you know it's about just kind of getting something to a certain point that you want it and then you can start doing something else or whatever it is and in another case it could be uh this confirmational bias type stuff because you know what this result doesn't jive with my thing fuck it i'm going with it anyway you know or whatever like um it you know if it you know it can create a cognitive dissonance maybe even and you might just reinforce your views like if you're religious or something like that you know there could be some really compelling arguments made by uh scientists and philosophers about why you know you know, there's really no uh, evidence to support some some of those claims, you know, and they're like, well, I have faith or whatever would be the response. You know, all roads lead to Rome. You know, it's like it's got to go in that direction. Um, and sometimes it's got to go in that direction because you're building a house and you don't have time to go. Oh, what's this over here? And the whole structure collapses and you're like, fuck, you know, or, you know, <laughs> other times, you know, <laughs> you're, you know, you're, you're, you know, trying to stick to your. Guns and sometimes it's it's just fine I think to stick to your guns because you know you can kind of hold out for a while because maybe maybe you know the experiments that were done were done poorly and so they contradict maybe things because I don't know um, maybe you can say hey you know science is this the best game in town right now and so we're gonna stick to that even though maybe there's eventually you know. 5,000 years from now, people will be like, there's no reason to do science. This is such a archaic thing, you know, or what, I don't know, you know, and they have like goobly doop that they do instead, which is so much better. Um, so anyway, I'm just trying to like, that's kind of how I've, that's, I think my original intent in that formulation, but I just, even now I still struggle to say things really concisely and to the point because as the game playing aspect of me which overrides most things i get super excited and i lift off and i'm like no nah, and it's, it's not even on the <laughs> ground anymore and, I, and you're and you're all like mm, we need to tie this to the ground what the fuck are you saying this is what i mean <laughs> anyway still no definitions <laughs> it's a lot th of talk what, didn't you give a definition of overdetermination in this sense and your definition was there are more equations than unknowns yeah, but that was over determination, not truth seeking, and I, I don't right, feel yeah, like yeah. I've given. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. So I don't know. We probably uh, this will be the last time I even push for it. I get that we're probably hitting this one too many times. I don't know what that mm. means. There are more equations than unknowns, because, and maybe this is again coming from the overseer <laughs> position. <laughs> there are always an indefinite number of unknowns. They are unknown. How can you even compare number of equations to number of unknowns when you don't know how many unknowns there are? Um, maybe I should read something because that's kind of where I was able to go back and go, oh, I underlined this years ago. 
and I wrote all roads lead to Rome next to it. And this was back, that's back supposed when I was to be the way the key to this. Well, that's just you know, when I was in school. I didn't know back then. It's just, this is pretty. Uh, I don't. I mean, this is not. This is a book called Numerical so Methods. Is, is Rome the known or whatever? So we there's the one destination, and it's known. And then the equations are the roads, so that there's many different roads mm-hmm. to get there, but the destination is the same. So that's the. Right. To me, that's a very. It wouldn't have to be though. <laughs> says the overseer. I want you know. At first, I'm like, well, that's a truth seeker type thing, but you could be a truth seeker and be some kind of metaphysical pluralist and say that no, there's not single definite destinations. Um, I, I, and I'm not saying that there absolutely has to be. Um, like if you're even a physicist, you can be like, well, we've got relativity, we've got quantum dynamics. We don't know how to connect the two of them, but we still like them, <laughs> you know. And, but maybe there are various other things going on that people are trying to work with, like strings or symmetry or whatever. And you know, they're trying to get towards some particular goal, and maybe there's just more paths than there are, um, you know, actual destinations or something like that. Anyway, maybe that was not good. How about... Let me read. Oh, okay, yeah. You can how about later? How about later, Harlan? Um, and it's not like this is going to be profound. That's the other sad thing that I like interrupted you. You're like inspired. You're like, how about? And I'm like, no, some boring text must be read. Um, okay. So if you think of like a like a matrix, you can think of a square matrix where it's N by N, you know? where you have, or you could say M by N, but M equals N. Does that translate? (laughs) God damn it. Yes, it's a square matrix. Okay, okay. You could have something like that, and that would just be a determined system or whatever. Um, And then where M, like you could say the number of uh, uh, rows there, there, there are, in this matrix um where the number of rows is greater than the number of columns there are more equations than unknowns and the system is said to be overdetermined overdetermined systems are usually solved by the method of say least square so you're drawing a line through a whole bunch of points right you can kind of imagine that can you picture you know a regression like that i can picture a line through a bunch of the numbers i don't know what a regression is but but just do the points uh, in a y and x axis. You know what I mean? Like, have you? you you've, I know you've seen lines get drawn between data points plotted in a y and x axis. I yep. don't know how you would have gotten to this point, and having not seen it. But um, so that that kind of stuff. Oh, and I put it up on Discord that one. The like those little cartoons or you know whatever they were. That's regression or whatever. So that would be like an overdetermined system. A common application is to fit a set of m of x, y data pairs to an equation involving n coefficients. So then where when m or the number of columns is less than the number of, or the number of rows is less than the number of columns. So before you had something like a tower, now you have something like a squat building or the tower fell over or something like that. And the windows are the, the point, you know, the, the, you know, the nodes or whatever. Um, <clears throat> there are fewer equations than unknowns. And the system is said to be underdetermined. An underdetermined system may have no solution or an infinite number of solutions. A typical application of underdetermined systems would be like numerical optimization or something like that. So then it goes on further from there. But that's kind of the thing that I was pulling from. And it's all very... Um, it just, for some reason, makes sense in my brain. And then, of course, I have uh, the advantage of looking at the pictures. Um, I, I should probably be nice and tell who the person is who wrote the book. It's Gerald Rechtenwald, and he's just like a computer scientist. <laughs> anyway, um, but uh, yeah, that did nothing for you. It 
it's been too long since I did linear algebra. I what it did for me is make me suspect that it's a very that it's a different use of the term over and under determined and one that I'm not familiar with how to use so therefore can't critique and might just say oh those are the perfect terms if I knew those if I knew the terms of art used in that domain right no I think it is I don't know how to connect them for you but I think that it is I think it's probably stems from logic you know, which is probably where the philosophers of science are pulling from that as well, and then coming up with clever ways to, you know, communicate that to those who maybe aren't as familiar with logic. You know, I'm guessing. That's a guess, mm -hmm. guess, guess. But that's that that seems like a natural, uh, you know, uh, evolution to me of the usage of these kinds of terms. I was going to say, how about calling them uh, externalist and internalist? I mean, I think that's nice. I don't, I, I can go there. And by that, what I would, what makes me go, that's fine. It's not something I'm going to adopt though, because I don't think we should abandon the other one yet. I, I'm not going right. to yet until I have confirmed whether or not, uh, -oh, uh, confirmed whether or not I actually should. <laughs> like right now it's just you and me talking and that's fine, but I know that I'm going to encounter some more stuff over time. Anyway, but I like external and internal because I think external is very much that Y axis. Is that correct? Yeah. That you were thinking right. where it's all very much oriented towards some, <clears throat> some outer thing. It, it, it's, it's attempting to verify or attempting to cohere, adhere, whatever, to something. You know, it could be statics. It could be God. It could be whatever fucking the truth is that Richard Dawkins wants. <clears throat> um, could be all that kind of stuff, maybe. Um, and then, and I don't know if I'm triggering you to like, you know, twinge or whatever every time I say stuff. But um, then the other one's internal because you're just sort of in the system and you're fucking around, <laughs> and you know, you're in you're in the stadium, right? You know, you're 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 bound by, you know, the system itself, and you're and you're ping ponging along. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I like that too. That's a nice little like, um, but I don't think that's a, that's like, that's not, that's not hitting it for me because I'm kind of thinking that it's not, um, it's too broad of terms or whatever. And it doesn't give you an analogy per se to kind of operate out of if the analogy could be explained well enough, which I think, I don't know. It's just you and me here. So, uh, there's no other feedback. Um, but you know, it is what it is at this point. Yeah. And like I said, I'm not at this point, I wouldn't demand request that you abandon over and under determined. They just don't work for me tonight here and now, but I now have a replacement that I can use in my own head anyway, that ought to simulate. Maybe if I run that program, I'll be able to construct sentences flow smoothly with your semantics we'll find hmm. out we'll find out although at the same time i still like the was it a prism or is it not a prism the toblerone or whatever <laughs> the toblerone's kind of that shape the individual pieces are not if you kind of stretch it out <laughs> yeah well you will just use that word oh i know what we can call it what try tip you know, like when you get a steak, you're welcome. You are welcome. Hey, thanks. So does this, does considering Stuart Kaufman break this uh, setup, what about the people who appear to be truth seekers but work on complex systems where there are, where they think there are more unknowns than equations so far at this point. That's what it is to be a complex system. But, you know, there are right answers. That's how the world works, and I want to figure it out. And we are. Like, what if there's a, a truth seeker and or engineer type individual, someone who pursues their, who's oriented that way in their investigations, but 
who well, is okay. happy to say that there's more unknowns than equations. Well, then, r remember, you're somewhere in the mix, right? You're, I mean, I never said that it's categories, you know? So there's, you can be, you can operate in different ways. And maybe being somewhere in the coordinates of whatever is happening, uh, you know, wherever you are in the coordinates space, um, you know, that might provide you the opportunity to kind of go or be both things or whatever often however you just said something that like i don't know i just feel like it's like it just i mean it's not something i was expecting at all tonight and i'm like holy <laughs> shit <laughs> you all right, know? Good. Let's, just like, let's talk about it okay you just said the definition of complex systems is where there are more unknowns than equations and I'm like, oh, let's talk about that. I don't disagree. I'm excited. <laughs> um, like, that's great. But, I mean, I would say I'd want to ask you if you agreed that um, – sorry, I'm a little distracted because my dog, I think, wants to kill somebody who's outside right now. She's just like, let me kill you. Come closer. Anyway, um <laughs> Do you she's need to like go take adamant. care of that for her? No, no, no. She's. I'm, I want to ride this. Um. So, <laughs> you know the uh, the thing is, I want to ask. Could that be like an epistemological definition of complexity? Are there any ontological definitions of complexity? Anyway. I just love it. I'm just like, wow, so much room to roam. What if I said it's epistemological if you're an x-axis type person, and it's ontological if you're a y-axis person? Ooh, can we have axis of epistemology and axis of ontology? Oh, shit, there's a lot to go on here. This is why I think we love this whatever the fuck we're doing. What is this thing? The Triamond. Well, it's kind of a game that we're playing, I think. Yeah. yeah, it is a game for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem when it becomes an infinite game. It doesn't really ever settle on anything. You just keep going, and you're like, well, I don't know. You know, but it's fun, and I like it, and it works so far. Um, But yeah, I, d I definitely, I don't know. What do you think about all that? Do you have thoughts, or are you just like, no, I've always thought that, even though you didn't use ever probably equations and unknowns in your thoughts necessarily in that way? Um, or did that just come to you too? Yeah, it just came to me. It, I mean, I just said words. I don't even know if I agree with them. Uh huh. But that's what I felt like saying at the time. Yeah, that I'm glad you if did. If we play this game and use these terms, is that what a complex system would be? Would that be in Ryan knowledge, Ryan language? Mm. That knowledge. There are more unknowns than equations. Wow. Yeah, I like it. Obviously, a lot. I don't know. I'm just gonna like. I can like go to bed with that one. I guess. I. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, that's awesome. That would be another fun one to explore. I know we could do that here now, but I, I don't know if we um, would make any good sense of it at the moment just because I'm not sure if we ever need, if we've wrapped up the other discussion or if we should just end that discussion itself and just say, it was fun when we found that one little thing that we later talked about. Um, I have at least two other things to still say about the triumph. Oh, good. Okay. Let's try them on joy. But there could be a third one, and it would be the one that's the most closely related to this complex system riff. Um, are there unknowns that cannot be known? Obviously, well, I mean, I assume we can agree that there are unknowns, again, defined as measurements of a system that have not been taken. So there are unknowns that any given community couldn't know at a time, given technological limitations. What would you 
how would you respond to the question, might there be necessary unknowns that no community, given no technology, could ever extract from a system? Um, I'm just totally... <laughs> I'm going to start out by jumping in the gun before you can say it and be like, well, anything's possible. Uh, uh, uh. Um, <clears throat> I want to say that seems like a real, I mean, that seems quite possible. Like that does seem possible to me in terms of, um, you know, we just, right now anyway, kind of suck it so much, you know, and we're just <laughs> trying so hard to do any of this at all in any kind of respectable way. So how could we possibly expect it to discover all the unknowns, you know? And, of course, people could always be like, well, there are things that happened 65 million years ago that you'll never, you know, like, so you can always say that, right? Um, something that wasn't captured in... It happened in a galaxy you'll never visit and <clears throat> no human ever will or no robot or whatever, right? Um, that there isn't one entity that could collect it all or whatever. Um, well, what about a more mundane case? Would some of the Santa Fe Institute crowd maybe claim that that's already the case with some systems with which we are already familiar that there's just something interesting about i don't know auto catalytic chemical system x in this living creature or whatever that we not only can we not get it it's just ungettable for some i don't know self-referential reason or epistemic horizon instituted somehow that there's just inaccessible information of course i tend towards saying no to those kind of questions because i think anything's possible I, what i'm asking is are we willing to consider something impossible and i'm at this point not yeah i mean i i we've been talking for so long. I mean, this is not one of those things I get hung up on. Um, I have talked to you and other friends about this. Um, and I don't even remember where I ended up at the end of it. I liked thinking about it though. Um, in terms of, well, there, what if there are things that are, you know, I think the the approach I took at one point in favor of the, uh, unknown unknowns that will always remain unknown or whatever was something along the lines of you know uh, discrete paths of accumulating information and knowledge or whatever and that you know they might meander but they won't you know like a plow or whatever just collect it all you know or even expand wide enough ever you know and then what about all the things they never collected uh, behind them that when they were not nearly as wide or something like that. That was the approach that I took, I think. And I think you and, and uh, I think it was Connie, a new individual for you, Zero Listener, to think. Huh? Um, but I think it was you and Connie, we were talking about it, and you guys were like, come on. And I was like, no, I want to, you know, whatever. But, um, that's what I that's where I think I, I last left it. Um if you're trying to provoke an argument out of me, <laughs> I don't know that's the one. Okay, you'll argue with me about this instead. Oh Christ. Is it well, not necessarily is it better, but what about the grouping? of truth seekers and game players and overseers and engineers because so you said something about you talk about fixed points a lot and as soon as every time you say the phrase fixed points i think that applies most clearly to truth seekers and game players truth seekers have fixed points 
to the extent that they think there's a reality out there, an objective reality. It is how it is, no matter what anybody thinks about it, what eternal laws of physics, etc. And game players, because there are rules. You can't run out of bounds and run behind the bench, or and you know, you have to reestablish position in bounds before you blah, blah whatever. So the people who have fixed points are the truth seekers and the game players. Overseers, I think, obviously don't have fixed points. And engineers, it might be debatable. But I think there's a lot of similarities between truth seekers and game players if you look at that dimension as the, I don't know, as the externalist thing again. To the game players, to a strict game player, someone maxed out on that dimension, dimension the rules are inviolable and fixed right this is my game what are the rules and let me play the game or there's an objective reality out there that determines what is true and i need to figure out what is true and then the overseer version would just be we you know we can have whatever rules we want or we're willing to consider multiple different realities, or what if the laws of physics themselves evolve, blah, 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 like overseers seem unrestricted. And then maybe some engineers might also be unrestricted if they're of the kind of Kurzweil, Buckminster Fuller, etc. orientation where it's, or maybe David Deutsch or somebody, these people who say that Problems are inevitable, but problems are solvable. And we can, so we're not constrained by any rules because we'll just figure out how to jerry rig around it, you know. And we, oh yeah, I can fix that. I can figure that out. So that maybe some engineers are with the overseers in a non fixed point world. Um, is that the end? The end. Eh, wrong. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, um, see, I think maybe you you said maybe a lot and I'm not, I'm going to say it because you said it. Now it's in my head and I'm going to say it back. Maybe you thought when you started this latest little section or the second point or whatever, that this was going to be a provoking kind of thing, and I was going to have to be like John Searle and go, well, and then come up with some excuse about whatever. But uh, no, I, I I think this is just us exploring it further. <laughs> I think, yeah, there doesn't have to be just two axes. What other axes might there be? And how could maybe these things be grouped differently? You know, how what do they have in common? And I'd be like, yeah, this sounds like more fun. <laughs> Maybe I'm just too agreeable right now, um, which is sad. But I think uh, I like that. I like the idea that there's a possible other way to kind of rotate this whatever. It doesn't have to be geometrical, but God damn it, that's what we're doing. Geometry. Um, right. But we could rotate it and be like, oh, but when you rotate it this way, it's not like that the axes are different um and uh you know that's kind of cool but then again i don't i mean now i have to go again now i've got like two things to think about like a epistemological definition of complexity and this like new way to like rotate the thing and look to see how sometimes it's you know true seeking and uh game playing potentially on the opposite ends of a spectrum and you know not to say that they never were anyway, but kind of, you know, I wonder how that thing rotates and what kind of clarity can come of it. So I'm sorry, but I don't, I don't think I would fight <laughs> back on that. Okay, that's fine. And again, this goes back to the one of the initial virtues I pointed out, that uh, this thing is happy to be arbitrary. It's all arbitrary. We can do it however we want. So there was that, and then the final thing was another geometrical analogy, because as you asked, I peeked on Google or whatever for the thing. I didn't get the prism answer, but I did get another shape, uh, the tetrahedron, 
the okay. basically three sided pyramid, right? Uh, right? Four faces, six edges, whatever. So we can make a tetrahedron out of this if the one that we pull off isn't uh, adding engineering and drawing everything down, but rather in as it would be happy to do from its name, allow overseeing to float up top of everything and become the crown of the mountain and the other three remain a triangle on the floor, on the, on the ground level, game playing, truth seeking, engineering, and overseeing comes up above everybody. Because in a lot of senses, that one seems... To be different right and can apply to all of them you can oversee an engineer or a game or the behavior of a truth seeker if you want to get annoyed uh, <laughs> uh yeah that's also another direction that this could go in and again i'm not like against that either there's nothing there's no monkey mm -hmm. here it's the that's the yeah, yeah problem. i'm just adding Stuff. Yeah, it's just adding, and I think that would be a like now. Uh, that's something where I want to go and draw it. I literally just want to be like, "Oh, we're seeing at the top, and we'll see what that <laughs> looks like." <laughs> it's ridiculous. This is way too agreeable. And I guess the reason I was thinking about that was just going back to this previous thing about the fixed points or whatever, because I tried to make a version of engineering where they didn't have fixed points. But you know, if you're a bridge builder type, your fixed points are you know. Again, pretty the laws of uh, physics and the heavily, deeply entrenched human social construction of mathematics of your day, etc. Those are pretty fixed. So that overseers would be the only ones out of these four who don't have a fixed point. So therefore, that's why they'd have to float up above the rest. And we'd say that everybody on this plane plays by various different types of fixed point games. But then there's these overseeing motherfuckers. They don't do that. Wait they a minute. I've just come points. up with a way. I've just come up with a way to make the overseers at the top make sense. Even in the idea of saying fixed points. The truth seekers, the game players, and the engineers are the overseers fixed points. Bam! No. Yes. No. They are, that's terrible. That's how they get fixed. Yeah. Now your monkey's going. Yes. Excellent. They're Why not, Harlan? Fixed. Don't be such a jerk. Because <laughs> it's already <laughs> part of the entire program that it's fixed. To it. What these things are is that they apply to human beings, and that no human being is any one of these things. And we slide around at different times, like the whole thing is predicated on is that the people are not fixed points. Sure, but I still like my idea better. <laughs> um, I still like that. You know, you can remove... But so you, if you the were fixed to remove, points here's, could here's be the, thing. the abstract the thing. description oh, wait, wait. of the positions. Fox yeah, News! Well, this is... <laughs> I'm talking over... You don't get to talk. Fake news, more or less. Cut like, his no. mic! Um, cut, cut his mic! <laughs> Yeah, no, I think that it is because even if, like, say you remove engineering, you still got game playing and truth seeking, and the overseer can oversee on those points. But then if you remove the game player and you just have truth seeking, well, the overseer is still going to work with the truth seeker, but you remove the truth seeker, what does the overseer oversee? That's its fixed points. Those three and plus more, potentially, if we get any more ridiculous, um, that would be the the modes. It emerges out of these other modes fucking around bam well they're doesn't that just make them points but i don't know what makes them fixed i was going to say no, maybe overseeing the fixed is would fixed be some... to those points wherever those points go the overseer then gets to exist or whatever yeah, but the oh, it's the point. The thing is, you see, as a non-overseer, you don't understand this. The overseer is pushing them around. They're not pulled around by what those people do down on the plane. 
the overseer is the god position who's doing the pushing. <laughs> exactly. So what is the overseer pushing around if it's not pushing around truth seekers, uh, game players, and, and engineers, or anyone else? If it's not pushing anyone around, what is it? It doesn't – it requires – Oh, this is where you come in and be like, first, there was nothing but the overseer. <laughs> and then he said, let there be truth seekers. Uh, well, no, what I would anyway, say, actually where I would go with that is that's a, not that it is the uh, pure, beautiful, anachronistic past that I, to which I wish we could return but rather that that is my utopian future, that everyone would become an overseer and oversee each other and our own behavior. And fine, whatever. I mean, we don't need a, a bunch of dupes who think that there are real answers or that there are rules imposed from outside. I think the ideal situation is all and only overseers. Where we are all in each other's hands. I think that's silly, but <laughs> I could go without the truth seekers, I guess, because I don't really go in that direction anymore. Maybe when I was younger, I did, but uh, yeah, we as need I get to, older, we needed to, you know, we're talking about a three or four part tight thing. We need to have a truth seeker here tonight. We're just, we're both both willing to bash them. I know it's unfortunate, but. You know, maybe we can have like a revisiting Try em and Joy and then like, or whatever, Try em yeah. and Joy revisit it. And then we could say, uh, you know, we could include one of them and they'd be like, this point here sucks because of that. And then we just bash them too. No. Um, but uh, I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm fine with engineering, game playing and overseeing. I don't need it to be a only overseeing. When what would you do? You'd be like, you'd be exactly everything that, you know, when scientists are kind of pushed a little bit and they get pissed off about philosophers, they're like, what are they doing? It's just like sit there and talk and do, you know, like that's kind of what you would want. You'd want like no one would do anything. Be like, well, who's going to make lunch? I don't know. I don't oversee that. Um, yeah, you guys would just be like sitting around doing nothing but wasting away talking about who should go and make lunch. And no one would. The food would be rotten. The crops would have died. Yeah, I don't. Think yeah, so. yeah. Overseers are to engineers like birds are to statues, or whatever they say. Right. Nice. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you need something to perch on, you goddamn thing. Um. Yeah. So that's kind of why you uh, overseers are an emergent property of the other ones and they fixed points and they rise to the top. And I'm, t I'm not against that. I think that's totally something that's necessary. We need some kind of regulation. God damn it. Otherwise the other three just do really bad stuff. And honestly, maybe we could make some kind of application of this, make use of it in some way. Like I would wonder if that's kind of what happens in academia, you know, is like, that was one of the things that I was thinking about with engineering is that like, you know, they, all they need to be able to hold a slope on a hill is, you know, what's the porosity of the soil and the angle of the slope itself. And, you know, just these basic physical parameters. They don't care if there's what, you know, how much, you know, particular kinds of vegetational interactions are going on with the soil and with the bacteria and with the burrowing organisms or whatever it is. But who knows? Maybe that actually has an impact and they don't take that into account. And then the whole thing like slides and they're like, why is it not doing what we think it should do? Anyway. Um, and so it's that kind of thing that sometimes I was like, okay, well, there's, there's engineering. It's literal engineers, I suppose. And then the scientists would be more like, to me, a lot of the times game playing and the big game play game they play is publish or perish. But, um, you know, still when they're actually doing the science, I think they're just screwing around and they're testing hypotheses a lot of times, especially with the lab. They don't exactly know when they're special, you know, when they're younger and they're just like, I don't know, I don't, you know, Bunsen burners and whatever, um, you know, and then every once in a while, you know, you get somebody who's more poetic or whatever and more lofty and romantic about their view of maybe science or whatever. And they start going off about truth seeking 
and that's kind of how they make their living. But you need some kind of overseeing, you know, or maybe administrators are like truth seekers. They're like, God damn it, we need him, you know, butts in seats. You know, I don't care how you got there. Anyway, that's what I should have said. Um, you know, and then maybe we need some kind of regulation on that, like someone to say, well, what do you mean butts and seats? Why is that important? You know, we need regulation, but not tight regulation where everything's a fucking cloister, but we need some kind of checks on the system because otherwise then we just sort of off and running, which is I think what a lot of like certain kinds of economically, <clears throat> certain or economic orientations people have. They're just sort of like, let the invisible hand have its way. It's like, you know, are you going to actually ask a question about what would happen if that happens or are you just going to believe it? Anyway, sorry, I'm done. Must be getting late in the night. You said something earlier that I intended to attack, but I didn't write it down and it's no, gone now. Yes. But it involved, you said something about truth seekers that I thought was a game player thing or something like that. Mm. You probably don't remember really? either. Nope. One thing we've brought up a bunch of times, and I think we're agreeing that we haven't directly attacked it, is the whole definition question. What oh, would happen so if I said, as we approach the end of this podcast, you dawdler, why, what, <laughs> get, try to find the four modes of inquiry. What would happen? If really bad things. <laughs> Like I would not, I'm a, I'm not that kind of like, like, I'm not like you. I can't just like pull words and do things with them. I have to sit there and almost all the time, this is another issue you and I have apparently, but you know, you apparently, you know, think in words, this is how I say these things. And I think in, you know, images or whatever. Um, and uh, that's kind of what, that's how I pull, you know, making sense out of, the thoughts, you know, is usually it's like examining some kind of a picture in my head. And that's kind of how I get to understand relationships. And then I start to work with the words to kind of try and understand what it is. But I'm always having to go to the fucking thesaurus because I'm like, I don't know the words. Unlike Trump, I really don't know many words. I try. Um, but that's kind of my issue. That's how I come up with definitions as well, you know, or I can like play off of some that I've seen somewhere and I can say, well, I like this bit and this bit because that seems to be a little more concrete, I don't know, or less circular or whatever. So, um, yeah, I, I, I would rely heavily on you to start that uh, part of the conversation. Like, what do you say after all the things we've both said? What's truth seeking? Quixotic. Um, <laughs> but uh, let's see, what was I going to say? I bet that's something they've studied, right? That's something that's interesting to me, that kind of, that you can get different human beings to report. I think in X, and then some people say pictures, some people say words, I'm sure some say other things. That's one of those little treasures that I'm just like, what? Like, <laughs> I also have the knee-jerk response to say that, and I definitely lean toward words. But it's another one of those things where everything, it's obviously that all the answers are false. I mean, maybe we don't even think, or it, some people might say, well, I think in neurons. Ha! Ah, and so do you. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's, if you could do some kind of brain scanning game and see that there's a correlation between this physical area of the brain lighting up more often in people who say, who report, I think, in pictures. And, oh, look, it's the visual area of the brain that lights up when they're thinking. I, want, I assume someone has done that by now, but I don't know of yeah, it. This, this also sounds like a potential topic or an episode yeah. in and of itself, which would be fun, I think. Because we can kind of insert ourselves into it a little bit and just sort of play off of that for a while and then kind of remove ourselves from it and say, what the fuck? 
you know. Um, tune in next time <laughs> where we talk about the the one the thing we thought of in the podcast from the previous episode. Anyway, um, yeah, that's what I would say about that. I, and I and I like that it it it's funny. You have this reaction where I think yeah you have some kind of partial feelings of agreement, but you also are skeptical of it. And all I want to do is bring you back to the, you know, the the intuitional aspect. I just, I'm like, leave this one alone. <laughs> That's oh, all the, I want to do. The specific one about the picture thinking? Oh, yeah, totally. I'm just like, eh, hmm. you don't need to conquer that one. That one's, a, eh, just <laughs> leave it alone. There's other more important things. It's kind of like with the cops, you know, it's just like they're pulling someone over for a broken taillight. Like, isn't someone getting, like, viciously murdered right now, you know? <laughs> It's just like, uh, but, you know, instead they're just like ro roaming sharks. They're just like, something to eat, grr, something to eat, grr, you know. And that's the way you are with ideas. You're like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, this one won't give, I'm like, this one won't give you any sustenance. You need to go for the big fat seal, that, all that gelatinous fat to give you the energy to live in the ocean and run away from the killer whales which are hustlers but whatever um yeah i don't these are strange to define in a provide necessary and sufficient conditions sense when i think about attempting to define them i end up writing little miniature plays and i imagine someone entering the spotlight from stage left wearing a t-shirt that says truth seeker and then Ooh, they nice. say something you know and that that just the whole paradigm case version rather than right aristotelian style definitions but you know the for me the the truth seeker t-shirt wearer comes out on stage and says very dramatically because everything these people do is melodramatic <laughs> They say, there are correct answers, and we can find them. Yeah. And my job is to find them, you know. But the game player walks out on stage, and they're kind of um, distracted. Like, maybe they're <laughs> typing on a calculator or something. They're, like, very uh, flighty, you know. But he's... And they... <laughs> if you can get their attention to even turn their face to the crowd and say something. And it's like, eh, you know, there, there's a rule set. I like this rule set, and, I, and I'm going to explore its possibilities. That's the game, what the, the game player soliloquy. Classic. And, of course, you know, the overseer has a brandy in one hand and a cigar in the other. And, of course. And uh, kind of, you know, leans back at the waist a little bit and walks out slowly and... Again, kind of dramatically turns toward the crowd in order to say, you know, uh, there are conversations and we are going to examine their rule sets and point out their mistakes or, some, you know, or their, their foibles. <laughs> And let's see, the engineer, what are they all about? Well, don't they come out measuring the room? <laughs> and then they're like, mm, oh, that... you can't put that design here. <laughs> something like that. And I guess, well, let's see, what are, they're going to say something like, you know, I, I, okay, here's what I envision for them. It's like Scotty from the engine room on the original yeah. Star Trek, maybe. It can't be done, Captain. Yeah, or whatever. So th their manner is a sort of frustrated bemusement or whatever. You know, there's a little bit... You know, <laughs> yes. They, they're, they well, are like... kind of annoyed that you keep giving them specs and they're like, oh my God, <laughs> this is going to be so hard to do, but like, fine. You know, and then so they kind of right. have a 
two part. They start out frustrated, but then they just get determined. Or and, right. Uh, but in a, they have a wry smile the whole time. And they yeah, and say, if they're any yeah, good, they're right, miracle workers. Yeah, and they are like, yeah, they're okay. There are specifications, but they say that in a haggard way, and then in the happy way, they say they answer it with. But we can fulfill them. There are specifications and we can fulfill them. I don't know. Right. So those aren't definitions, but that's the... Nope. That's the little play that explains what these different orientations are. Yeah. For sure. I, um... <clears throat> yeah, they're hard to define. And... I don't know if I even care to define them. It's like we love to talk around them, you know? Um, but they should be definable. Um, now, I think I know something about you that all zero members of our audience don't, potentially. Is that, you know, you had said something about definitions in that there be some kind of necessary and sufficient conditions in order to, you know, formulate. A definition for each one of these or whatever um but because you think all things are possible and things like that you don't believe things are necessary right right so we then just be operating out of sufficient conditions for a definition i think those are different meanings different definitions of necessity i personally don't think that we ought to invoke any metaphysical necessities. But if we want to stipulate semantic necessities, that's fine, as long as you know that it's a mere stipulation and you're not positing that something in the universe is really necessary. It's, you know, you should be familiar with this. It's kind of a game-playing move, a linguistic mm. game, that uh, this is what, our model must include in order to legitimate p pasting this label on it. Mm -hmm. And I'm now. Don't you not play language games with me? <laughs> it's hard not to, but I mean, I think there are different types of definitions. That's one: the Aristotelian style definitions. There's like operational definitions. Uh, I don't know if what I just attempted to do could be considered a definition style. I don't know if it would be expositive or something. Um, but, you know, what's the definition of definition, Ryan? Oh, man, another episode. Fuck. That sounds like an episode. <laughs> Put it on the list. Oh, yeah, it's um, already, yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, anyway, that's the triangle diamond tetrahedronic prism pyramid <laughs> geomet the geometry of modes of inquiry idea mm, that's it yeah geometry i think we we should stop talking about modes of inquiry and be like the geometry or something something that includes the word geometry we'll get there uh yeah that was fun i think uh that that works for me i think we accomplished everything i i don't think that there was a moment of like sad awkwardness where there was really nothing to say i think it's something where we each equally cared enough about the idea that we fulfilled it nicely um i'll have to wait till i actually listen to the recording but even then it doesn't maybe saying nicely is it felt nice to me anyway um so yeah we can uh we can say you know sayonara or whatever I don't think we need to say much more. We've said quite a bit already. And we've said enough good stuff. I like it. And, uh, yeah, it's just clearly more shit to work with, which is fun. Sayonara, indeed. We'll Sayonara. be back with another one. Yeah. All right, I can stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're getting better. <laughs> Give you till the morning comes.
Till the morning comes Till the morning comes I'm only waiting till the morning comes Till the morning